grade 11s and welcome to this lesson where we will prove and apply the sign rule. Before we get into this, let's revise how sides of a triangle are named. If an angle is labelled with a capital A, the side opposite it is labelled with a small a. Angle B is opposite to side B. Angle C is opposite to side C. The side is always opposite the angle. Now let's prove the sign rule. In the diagram of triangle ABC, a perpendicular is drawn from C to line AB. It is labelled H because it is the height of the triangle ABC. Sign A is equal to H over B. Sign B is equal to H over A. Now let's make H the subject of both statements. H is equal to B sine A and H is equal to A sine B. We know that the value of H will be the same in both of the statements because it is the same line. Therefore, we can equate the two statements. So we can write B sine A is equal to A sine B. If we rearrange this equation, we will get the more attractive looking sine rule. Let me show you how. B equals A times sine B over sine A. And then B over sine B equals A over sine A. This is how we prove the sine rule. We're not often asked to do it, but it's important to know how it works. The official sine rule is A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. At any given time, we use two of these ratios. That is, A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, or A over sine A is equal to C over sine C, or B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. The sine rule is used in triangles without a right angle. We use it either when we are given the values of two sides and one opposite angle, or when we are given the values of two angles and one opposite side. Let us join Bobby as he teaches his students about the sign rule. I have a challenge for you that involves measuring triangles on paper. I have given you each a different triangle, all right? Now I want you to measure all the sides and angles of the triangle and write the measurements onto the triangle. We're done. Great. Try to see if you can find any relationships or patterns in them. But I don't see anything. Can you give us some sort of idea what we're supposed to be looking for? Have a look at the ratio of each side length and the sine of the angle opposite it. For example, look at the ratio of sine A divided by A. Then look at the other sides and angles. Can you find any patterns or relationships in them? Okay, sine A divided by A. Now, sine B divided by B. And sine C divided by C. Hey, I get the same answers for each of these ratios. What did you get? My answers for the ratios are actually also the same. And that's what I wanted you to notice. What general rule do you think you might get out of this? In other words, can you make a conjecture about the ratios you've found? In my triangle, I can say sine A divided by A equals sine B divided by B, and it equals sine C divided by C. That works for my triangle too. Do you think it can work with any triangle? Sure, and I actually think I found a rule. Good, what is it? I think that we could say that in any triangle, um, the ratios are equal. I mean, the ratios of sine of an angle divided by the opposite side. You're almost there. If you take any triangle, you'll find that the ratio of sine of an angle divided by the side opposite that angle is the same no matter which angle you choose. What we have here is called the sine rule. 
Another way to say this is to say that the proportion of sides and angles of a triangle are constant. But we've only tested two triangles. Don't we need to test more to be sure that the rule applies to every triangle? That's true. We can't generalize for all triangles based on only two examples. But instead of having to test hundreds of triangles, I can show you a proof that will show you how the rule applies to all triangles. Here's triangle WXY. We'll let it represent any triangle. So we can't use the measurements as part of the proof. But first, let's label the sides. Side Y, opposite angle Y. Side X, opposite angle X. And side W, opposite angle W. We want to prove that. Sine W divided by W equals sine Y divided by Y. We leave out the ratio of sine X divided by X for now. Just as with the other proofs we've done, it's useful to construct a perpendicular. So let's draw one from X and label this point V. Now, I've made two right angle triangles named WVX and YVX. We can define the length of VX using the trig in triangle VWX. We can also define VX using the trig in triangle VYX. Let's look at triangle VWX, which is sine W equals opposite divide by hypotenuse, which is equal to Vx divided by y. Now let's look at triangle Vyx, which is sine y equals opposite divided by hypotenuse, which is equal to Vx divided by w. Now let's look at equation 1 and equation 2. Now, can you get from these two equations to the ratios we're looking for? They both have Vx in them. Does that help? Well, I think so. But first, let's try to get Vx on its own in each equation. OK. So I multiply equation 1 by y on both sides. That's y times sine w equals Vx. In equation 2, I multiply by W on both sides. That's W times sine Y equals Vx. So that means that the two equations are equal to each other. So Y sine W should be equal to W sine Y. But how does that help us? That's very close to what we want. Look, divide both sides by W times Y. Now, if we divide by wy, we can cancel out the y's here and cancel out the w's here. And we get sine w divided by w, which is equal to sine y divided by y. And that's it. We can easily do the same to show that sine x divided by x is the same as the two other ratios. So we have shown that in any triangle, the sides are in proportion to the angles that are opposite them. And that is just another way of saying that the ratios are equal. One more thing, because we're working with constant proportions, the inverses of the ratios are also equal to one another. That means side A divided by sine of angle A equals to side B divided by sine of angle B, which is also equal to side C divided by sine of angle C. Right, we spent quite some time on theory, and now it's time for your first challenge. All the math you need is in the formula that we've looked at so far. Let's go and see what your challenge is about. Well, I sure hope it's nothing too physical. I mean, after all, you did say it's supposed to be a quiet day, remember? It will survive.
Okay, guys, listen up. We've placed four pegs in the ground and joined them with the rope to mark off a playing field. But why four? We've been working with triangle so far. I really don't know. I wonder what he's up to. I've made sketches for you guys this time. The four pegs are marked P, Q, R and S. Okay guys, your challenge is to calculate the shortest length between the pegs marked P and R. And you may not use any measuring tools. But we don't have any measurements. And our formulas only work for triangles. Don't worry, I have your measurements right here. QR is 8 meters. Angle QPR is 77 degrees. And angle Q is 48 degrees. Do you think we can do this? Let's take it one step at a time. Let's start by putting the measurements we have onto the sketch. Side QR is 8 meters and angle Q is 48 degrees. But where is angle QPR? And if I join PR, we get that angle over there. Joining PR makes a triangle that we can work with. So now I guess we can use our trig. Well, it looks like it. How are you two getting on? We know we need to find the length of PR. That's the diagonal across here. I think we can use the sign rule. Let me tell you something about the sign rule. You need to look at the two angles and the two sides opposite the two angles. So we could use angle QPR and the side opposite QR. One way to remember when you can use the sign rule is to look for the cross formation of the arrows on the diagram. This tells you that you have enough information to be able to use the rule. Thanks, but does it matter whether I use sine Q divided by Q or Q divided by sine Q? No, the ratios are equal, so that means that the inverses of the ratios are also equal. Okay, so in our diagram, Q divided by sine Q equals P divided by the sine of P, which is equal to R divided by the sine of R. Now we can put the values we know into this equation. We don't know Q here, but we know sine Q will be sine of 48 degrees. Little p here is 8 meters, and sine p is sine of 77 degrees. We're looking for Q, so now we have enough information to find it. We don't need this last bit, r divided by sine r, so let's leave that out. Okay, now we can find the length we want, Q on its own. If we multiply both sides by sine 48, we get Q equals 8 times sine 48, all divided by sine 77. Can we just cancel sine at the top with sine at the bottom? Be careful. That is one mistake a lot of people make. Sine is not a thing that stands out by itself without an angle. Sine 48 is a very different value from the sine of 77 degrees. So to answer a question, no, you can't cancel sine with sine. Right. Let's just use a calculator. I want the sine of 48 and times it by 8. Then I divide the answer by 77 and press sine and equals. That gives me 6,10 meters. Well done, guys. Now let's all head back to the lapa. So far, we've calculated a side using the sine rule. But what about finding an unknown angle? I want you to work on your own this time. Here's the problem. In triangle RST, you have SR equal to 12,4 meters, RT equal to 10,5 meters, and angle T equal to 37 degrees. I want you to find angle S. Use the sine rule. So little s is here, little t is here, and little r is here. Look, the information forms a cross. So sine of S divided by S must equal sine of T divided by T. We don't need R at all, so we have all that information we need except angle S. And that's the angle we're looking for. Now, if you substitute the values into this equation, what will you get? Side S is 10,5, T is 37 degrees, and side T is 12,4. Multiply both sides by 10,5 and we get sine of s equals to 10,5 times sine 37 degrees divided by 12,4. That comes to 
Hold on. 37 sine times 10 comma 5 equals and then divide by 12 comma 4. Now to find angle S, we use the inverse sine key on the calculator. That gives us an angle of 30 comma 6372 degrees. 30 comma 6372 degrees. And if we round that off to two decimal places, we get 30 comma 64 degrees. Not only was that a good explanation of the sign rule, it was also a good example of what questions in this section will look like. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the task video for this section for more practice. Also visit our website to find more resources for this section. Want to be the top of your class? Here's where you sign up. Goodbye.